Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Steve and today I'm going to do an overview on Gigabyte's Z87X D3H. Okay guys, here's a look at the box before we get started. Of course it is a uh, uh, Gigabyte's ultra durable model which means that they're going to be incorporating solid capacitors in it as well as an all uh, international rectifier the digital um, CPU power design uh, using their, their chips from IR. Um, also it's going to have a, a dual BIOS, the dual UEFI. Uh, from from uh, Gigabyte, which I'll show you on the board as well. Also, they're they're uh, using 10 USB 3.0 ports, uh, and the way they're doing that is actually using a, a Renesis chip uh, to give them a couple extra. Let me flip it around to the back of the box, show you a little bit more. Uh, as you can see here, here's the board which I'm going to show you. Um, did mention the the longer lifespan using the solid capacitors. Uh, there's 15 microns uh, of gold plated um, on, they're gold plating the CPU socket, 15 microns of it, a little bit extra, just to give you a little bit less resistance and also less uh, corrosion and better connectivity. And you can also see here's the international rectifier um, chips that they're utilizing for power delivery. Uh, they also have a, a glass fabric PCB that's built into this particular board to give it uh, a little bit more strength. Uh, there's going to be five fan connectors, which I'll show you here in a moment, and uh, power, failure, power failure protection using their, their anti-surge uh, ICs. So let's open up the box and take a look at the accessories. Okay, guys, so here's what we have first. The, uh, the manual and digital format, as well as some of the drivers here from Gigabyte. You're obviously going to want to go to Gigabyte's website directly or even Intel's directly to get the chipset drivers for that. Uh, then we have the installation guidebook, as well as the manual. And they've also provided an SLI bridge, but uh, it, this board is capable of doing crossfire as well. Just keep that in mind. And we have four. Uh, SATA 6 cables that are also backwards compatible to uh, the Vision 2 and 1. Uh, there are two 90 degree bends uh, for the, the uh, SATA cables here as well as two straight cables. So in case you need straight or bent, they have both 90 degree bends. Uh, then we also have the uh, motherboard I.O. shield for the back panel. Be sure to plug that in first before you install this motherboard or else you're going to be hitting your life. Hey everybody, here's the board itself. Now you notice it is a black PCB and I'll turn it around just so you can get a, a better look at the actual PCB itself. Pretty solid black there, matte black finish, not very glossy at all. Uh, also you notice that uh, there are several uh, Phillips head screws that are here. You could remove the heat sinks that uh, they're currently utilizing for the chipset and the power delivery system if you decided you wanted to go to water or just uh, switch them in general. So flip back around again and show you where the board is here. Now I'll start on the bottom right first and you'll notice uh, first off we will have the one of five fan headers total on this particular board. Uh, three system fan headers and two for the CPU. Uh, next to that we do have uh, the clear CMOS jumper. Now it doesn't come with a, a jumper itself but you could just use something that was conductive like a screwdriver or something like that and just uh, uh, make that circuit happen for a bit to, and don't forget to remove the battery when you do that just to clear the CMOS. Then we have the front panel header here. All of your case uh, switch connections, power and hard drive activity LEDs are going to connect, be connected here along with a few other things. Uh, above that you'll notice two chips here. Those are your uh, BIOS chips or UFI chips. Uh, those are two 64 megabit uh, flash uh, chips uh, storing your UEFI. UEFI. Uh, one for the backup and one for the main. Uh, next to that we have two more front USB 2.0 fan head or excuse me 2.0 headers for your case as well as another fan header here the number two of three for the system fan headers. Uh, next to that we have the uh, TPM or trusted platform module header, uh, a COM port header. We have two SPDIF, uh, one that is an in and one an out. Uh, both leading into the Realtek codec chip on this particular board. And we have a front panel, front panel audio header connecting your headset and microphone connections via your case front. Um, and all these are going to connect into, as I said before, the Realtek chip, which is actually located right here. And uh, all that is going to connect into the, the rear panel, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. Now, up here at the top of the PCI Express slots, we do see one, one more, the final of the, the three system fan headers. Uh, now, speaking of the PCI Express slots, we have uh, three PCI X1 slots, 
And down here at the bottom, we have the fourth PCI uh, Express. This is an X4, uh, excuse me, speed slot. And then we, uh, that actually is going to utilize a, a switch to connect to the PCIe bus. Um, that way they can get this PCI slot uh, on this particular board should you need that. Uh, this board does provide it. Uh, it will also connect to the PCIe bus along with the Intel Gigabit uh, Ethernet LAN chip, which I'll, I'll show you here in just a little bit. Uh, then we have the two main PCI Express slots that you'll be using for SLI or Crossfire. Uh, if you're just using one, it'll utilize um, uh, X16 here. It'll drop down to 8 if you end up going to 2, so that both of them will be X8 uh, in, in speed using up those pipelines. So let me just show you here, we have the Z87 chipset itself, which is uh, being cooled off by this blue and black aluminum heat sink from Gigabyte. And if I move to the very edge here, I'll flip it around so you can actually get a better look at it. Uh, this is uh, six SATA, six gigabyte per second, gigabyte per second ports, uh, all natively connected to the Z87 chipset. And I'll flip it back around again, because I gotta show you some more on the top of the board. Get that back in there. So we have two more USB 3.0 headers here, and I'll just remove the cover for one of them. This red one's going to be the one that's natively connected to the Z87 chip uh, chipset, and this other one is going to give you two USB 3.0 ports uh, connected via via that uh, Renesis uh, chip. That's a UPD uh, 720210 chip from Renesis. It's also connecting the other six 3.0 ports on the, the back panel, which I'll show you here in a little bit uh, via that chip. Now moving right above that, we do have the uh, ATX uh, power connector that's uh, the 12 volt standard 2x12 main power connector. Uh, this board is going to require a 500 watt PSU at a minimum. Uh, next to that, I do have the four DDR3 memory sockets. And this is, of course, a Z87 chipset, so it's going to utilize dual channel memory. Uh, so you're going to need to buy them in kits and install them in pairs. Uh, remember, if you are installing this for the first time, you're not really sure what you're doing. You want to use these two, the gray ones, first for DIM1 and DIM2 slots. Uh, then later, if you end up getting an upgrade, you'll, you'll uh, install them here for three and four slots. Um, moving next to that, this is an Intel uh, socket 1150, so let me remove that, which is for your fourth generation uh, Intel uh, processors. Uh, remember that uh, these particular uh, sockets are not backwards compatible, so just keep that in mind. Don't uh, install one of the Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge CPUs into this particular board. Uh, you notice the uh, kind of gold tint there, that's because it is uh, uh, gold plated with 15 microns of gold on the CPU socket itself. Now, uh, around the outside of that, uh, you will see more of the, uh, the uh, uh, blue and black heat sinks from uh, Gigabyte that'll, that'll, aluminum heat sinks, I should say, that'll take care of the power delivery system, keeping it cool. Uh, that power delivery system is utilizing the uh, international rectifiers uh, power design, so this way, you know, you're getting high quality ICs in that particular area. Also, the the solid capacitors that I mentioned before. Up in the top left here, you will notice that they have the, uh, the other 12 volt power that's supplementarily powering the CPU. That's a two by four um, ATX power connector. Just keep that in mind when you're plugging that in. If you don't plug that in, it will not turn on. Now I'm gonna turn this around sideways just to show you the uh, back panel ports here now. And spin that around a little bit. So we have two USB 2.0 ports here, uh, one PS2 port. We have the VGA and a DVI, as well as an HDMI uh, video out. Now all three of these, of course, because it's utilizing the onboard video that would be on to the CPU itself on those Haswell CPUs. Remember that uh, because of that, you can actually do triple monitor display. Uh, probably not powerful enough to do any serious gaming, but if you just wanted to have a desktop and didn't want to pay for a video card, this would definitely do the job. Here's six more of the USB 3.0 ports that I mentioned before, the Intel Gigabit uh, Ethernet LAN, as well as your Realtek uh, audio here. Okay guys, that wraps up this overview of Gigabyte's Z87X D3H mainboard. If you like what you saw today, go ahead and click the like button. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon.